Hi, uh, thanks for joining my video. Welcome aboard uh, one B one seven one Bravo one seven the nine fifteen at uh, the Paddington. I'm just going to show you where the safety systems are for the class forty three HST. That's the DSW and the ASW AWSRA. You isolate them and you get the safety systems turned on. Over here is the lights to turn on your lights. Make sure all them are done. This is basically I'm just going for the setup of the cab there to make sure that your, your lights are set to the way you want to go we're going forward you want day lamps or in the evening you want night lamps if it's at the back this is the uh, master key and the reverser which obviously goes off and it goes on I've already set it up um, so then this is the brake control as you can see it goes right up to five and then full service and obviously your needle should move if they don't move there's a problem and I'll just drop back to initial while we're stood in the station yeah, so when you have the safety systems isolated, you uh, are using your AWS, the DSD vigilance pedal, which I'll show you in a minute, and obviously uh, various other items, there's a DA, that's the driver reminder appliance, uh, that's what they normally set when they're stood at a red signal, to remind them not to take power while they're stood at a red signal, then it can be just turned off, I don't tend to leave mine on. But I better unlock the doors, because I've not been unlocked, I've just jumped on board, it's what, 9-4, uh, sorry, better lock the doors, apologies. Uh, as we're ready for departure, brakes in initial. When you do set up the reverser, um, when you've got these safety systems uh, on, they will you'll get a chime from the AWS, which means you have to cancel the AWS, and then it will. Right, so we're off. The signal's off at the end of the platform. I'll drop the brakes off, let the air drop down, and then I'll apply a couple of notches of power just to get the train moving. The HST obviously it's an older train although it's a powerful train it's two engines one each and for those that don't know um overall it, it, although it is a quick count it's a maximum speed of 125 mile an hour well you know cruising speed can take a little bit of time to get moving admittedly but once it does get moving as long as you've got good adhesion it will move relatively quickly so we'll just ease ourselves out of paddington although i've gone to four there is five throttle steps or notches as they're called I mean, notch four, I'm just dropping out of Paddington, going into the 40 mile an hour as we approach, um, well, basically Royal Oak. And then that will, um, it goes from 40 to 50, 80 to 100. Um, the more best driver's side, I'll try and use everything manual. It's a bit more difficult in the HST or the class 43. Yeah, ignore the, the number on the desk saying 44036 is it, don't ignore that, that's just a glitch in the game, that tends to happen quite a lot, tends to put random numbers. I tend to cover the AWS because I'm using safety system, try the manual control, um, I, you've got, I'll try, I'll, I'll, I'll use the cursor which is on the PlayStation pad, is you drop down, you, you hold down the, the right stick R3, and then that gives you that little cursor that I'm moving around with, but going a bit too quick so I'll drop the power off there. Um, uh, try and cover the AWS, even though I should mostly be on greens for the majority of the trip, if not all the trip, well, up until Reading at least. Um, I'll try and cover the AWS. The other thing as well, when you're not moving the controller around, uh, your Vigilant or your DSD driver safety device will bleep at you every every 60 or 90 seconds, is it? I'm not entirely sure, I should check really. But I don't, I try to make a habit of, of, of um, pressing down on DSD uh, every time I go for a signal. And the DSD is the is on the floor, so it's it's the, the uh, in a real driving cab the, the driver uses his feet, or the driver uses their feet. Apologies on the board of equality. So I'll I'm taking it steady now. So I'll drop the power off because I'm doing 52. My next markup's 100 mile an hour because uh, I'm on the fast lines um, in just under half a mile, just over half a mile. But I still I don't want to try and stay there too much. So I'll drop the power up slightly. Um, slight climb out of London now as we approach um, Old Oak um, and uh, we'll be going past the North Pole depot on the left hand side in a minute that'll be where well that is where the, the new Attachy trains live obviously this map is slightly out of date because it was designed from about 18 months ago probably two years ago so there's not as much over overlay uh, there's not obviously the we've, we've still got HSTs and 166s on this route and 6060 sorry um, I don't know whether there's any plans to update the route in any way, shape or form to have the newer trains or have more trains or finish the route's electrification off or what, well, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. TSW working other routes at the moment, so 
adding more I'm sure adding more trains and stuff into a route and adding more infrastructure shouldn't be a massive problem right so we're in the 100 mile an hour uh, speed limit now so I'm gonna open up so we're off there so we'll start powering up a bit the there has been an update to the general physics of the HST in general uh, um, mostly power control I've noticed that the power control is a lot more responsive and there's a lot more um, it's even more powerful I've noticed you have to, I've, I've just got used to driving the way I've driven it and they've changed it slightly so I've had to get used to it again so I do apologise if uh, things don't seem right but I, I think I've got a hang of it now yeah so as again there's North Pole Deck on the left hand side and we'll be going through Old Oak the old Old Oak which is now shut uh, to the time of this video uh, the 12th of uh, December 2018 that the depot itself has now been shut to HST so yeah I'll just click my DSD there just so I can so we can keep the uh, vigilance at bay because if you don't press anything if you don't control touch the controller the actual power controller or or the uh, DSD the, the it will bleep at you which obviously means you have to intervene uh, to intervene you'll press the DSD or you you um, remove the, you, you move the controller so yeah that's uh, basically us getting up to speed uh, again I'll just keep tapping on that um, like I said, I'm trying to try and you, manual control is a bit more difficult, but it's 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 certainly doable, and I'm going to show you that it is doable. So I tend to cover the AWS because you've got um, even though the majority of signals be green, you do have PS, uh, PSR reminders, reduction of PSR reminders. So that's where the, the the permanent speed restriction is going to reduce. So you get a pre warning, which means you have to acknowledge that with a uh, uh, the AWS goes off, the anti automatic warning system will go off. Um, which you have to you have to cancel so that you know you are responding to the fact that you are aware that the speed of light is going to reduce so we're just going past Acton Yard there's a 66 on a, on a looks like a liner just rolling through there so um, yep that's Acton Yard we're going at a nice steady 95 mile an hour so we're powered up nicely we are now in the 125 mile an hour speed zone so we can as you can see we never really got to 100 within the 100 mile zone but we'll uh, we're certainly going to try and power up now as we fast approach Ealing Broadway. Um, so yeah, um, we are taking on quite nicely. It's having a good look around the cab. You can see it's quite a realistic looking cab. I, I do enjoy playing this. I have to say, um, I really do. It's nice for once. They have a decent tracing with it on the console. I'll just clap the DSD again so it doesn't play it. To, so if, I, if you keep hitting that DSD. You've got to remember what you're doing manual control. It doesn't matter when you're just using the when you're using the uh, controls on the pad. It's it's easy because you can just press circle, which is what you would do. You press circle, which control, which can cancel your AWS, and it also acknowledges your DSD. And obviously, you've got your shoulder buttons. The right hand shoulder buttons will control your throttle, and the right hand brake control brake, uh, controls will control your brake. So that's what happens there. All right. Okay, so now we're approaching Slough at a bit of speed, so I'm going to try and get that horn blown. I like blowing the horn, just an added complication. So, again, yeah, we've skipped a little bit just because obviously I'm just powering up, it's pretty boring stuff. So, yeah, um, so one of the things that is proved a bit more difficult as you drive this uh, than HST with the new physics and stuff is keeping the train at 125. You tend to have to really do a bit of moving up and down with the throttle, especially based on the gradients. The gradients can be shown where the hood is on the GUI hub to the right hand side there is a at the, the top circle at the three that shows you gradients at the moment it's flat um, <clears throat> so it's just about getting that sort of level that sort of keeping it at a good pace that if you keep if you keep it on five it'll just keep going faster and faster and faster as I've, I've noticed in the past so you do really have to you know fettle the fall up and down between one and four to kind of keep the train running at a relatively average speed the good thing with that is while you're doing that you're not requiring to push your DSD as much because you're intervening um, however at the same time because you're covering your AWS obviously like I'm doing um, you know you have to try and time it right it's, it's making sure that you while you're not doing that you're not um, yeah, you know you're not uh, missing out on the AWS so I've got it at a steady well not free now we're climbing the hill it's 126 mile an hour so I'm going to leave that to I think that should be just enough as we just approach and go through Burnham. That's Burnham Station on the right-hand side. Um, so we are 
Um, what's that? It's 9.28 and we're not doing ready till 9.42. And, and to be fair, we're not massively miles, but as you can see, we're, we're, uh, we're not too far away, to be honest. We should be, should be there in the next, well, to be honest, in past experience, we should be there in the next seven or eight minutes. Probably, well, about ten minutes. Um, going along, as long as nothing gets in our way, of course. So as we've uh, kept that um, throttle at a steady speed, I'll keep pressing the DSD, keep covering the AWS. Um, as we start our powering towards Taplow. So this is Taplow station. Um, now the main reason why I've skipped the most of the video, just in case uh, people are wondering, is because uh, there wasn't really much other than about to shout all the stations at you, but there's a separate guide for that anyway that I have got. Oh look, we're just overtaking 166, let's try and see if we can do a bit of clever camera action. Just, yeah, if you, oh there we go. Yeah, lovely. I always try when I come out of the cab to quickly make sure that I've got all my safety systems pressed, otherwise I could get caught, you can get caught out quite quick because it will obviously still drive. So yeah, um, if you hold down on the R3 button, it comes up with the camera options. Obviously you've got external camera. Um, obviously I just wanted the free camera, so I'll quickly press what I wanted, but you can explore with other cameras. Like I say, the issue you have when you're in the external cameras is the train is still going. Everything is still be, needs to be operated. Yes, you've got your manual controls, but if you've got your safety system on, on you have to be ultimately aware there's Maidenhead. Uh, you have to be aware that those systems are still active and they will go off. And you, although you, you do have a, a, although even though you're at the cab, it will still you can still hear it. Um, you need to remember how to cancel it. But if you go, if you press triangle while you're in free camera, it goes into free mode, and then that's where you've got no control over the train. So you have to press triangle again to get control. Just a little tip there, just in case. But I have got to do a separate video about the external control um, cameras anyway, um, through my collection, if you've not seen some already. I've done a lot of ones, I'm doing quite a few 166 videos at the moment because there's a lot of, uh, lot of doing lots of different types of mission, lots of different services, the stopping and starting patterns, it's all, all relative, it's all little tips and stuff about how to drive, tra how to drive the trains on TSW and the different tr services that there is and the different stopping patterns, etc. So we're going along nicely now. We're still climbing. It's a pretty good climb all the way up to ready now. Uh, steady, so steady knots free. 126 mile an hour. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I might start affecting the the throttle to to keep the uh, vigilance at bay because uh, then I ain't got as further. To, I ain't got as far to move from the AWS magnet magnet the AWS uh, dome. Which, uh, so I'll just keep doing that, and in that way, that keeps the that keeps my vigilance at bay. This bit of the route is the probably the longest stretches so you get quite long stretches of between stations now so you, you as, as from Paddington you're pretty much passing the station every two to three mile um, after Slough again probably three to four mile and then after Maidenhead it's literally like um, Twyford's about six mile away and then uh, Reading's another four and a half to five mile away so we're powering our way up towards Twyford um, going through the the villages of like Waltham and, and, and places like that. So uh, at 126 miles an hour, this feels incredibly quick. I've been doing a lot of work on the 166 on the relief lines, and you go when you when you stop, of, of course, um, it, you have to accelerate and take. And it seems to take forever between Maidenhead and Twyford, and the maximum speed I've managed to get before having to stop at Twyford is 86. So that just shows you the difference in speed that we're going at the moment, and it just seems to take for ages. We're just approaching. Um, the main bridge at Waltham St Lawrence which is the bridge that overlooks Ruscombe Junction which is just outside Ruscombe Village which is in between um, which is just outside Twyford so yep so we're just approaching I get the desk because I'm getting sick of moving the throttle uh, there's Ruscombe Junction there so that's a high speed junction that's 70 mile an hour to go over that so it's pretty pretty quick I don't know if I any way so ironically I've, got, I've been there in real life and done some video and I've actually got a video of two HSTs passing on that junction uh, back in 2007, so uh, I'll uh, a little bit of reminiscing there. So yeah, anyway, going back to it. Now this is thing. I've rode this route quite a few times. With me and me and my dad have visited these places in real life, and I we are really gobsmacked of how close they are to the real thing. This is uh, the first bridge at Ruskin Village. Uh, so now we're sorry about the snotty. Uh, we're now approaching Twyford. So that's another bridge there, and then there's one more bridge, and it's Twyford Station. Uh, bizarrely, the fast lines at Twyford sweep round. Whether it's the relief lines, go straight through. Never got that. But anyway, it's 125 and we're going. So uh, we've just dropped down to 125, just by one mile an hour. I might start pulling off. We are, what, four and a bit miles away from, 4.7 miles away from Reading. Um, 
that uh, we're going to be there. I mean, look at the time, it's only gone 33. I mean, oh my God, I mean, that's we're at nine minutes before we have to arrive and we're only four minutes, minute, miles away doing 125 by now. So you don't have to be a great mathematician to realise we're going to be there in the next five minutes, next three or four minutes. So we're, we're flying along. I'm going to pull the power down. I've got to be ready for the... So as you can see on the right-hand side, it says there in 2.3 mile, there's a 95 mile an hour speed. Um, now, to be honest, the speed's coming very quick, quick succession. There will be a reminder for that speed. So I'm going to get myself ready with my AWS. So that's why I've dropped the power off now. So that kind of resets my vigilance uh, there. So I'll just wait for that um, uh, AWS reminder for the speed. I'll also start getting, I should start getting restrictive aspects as well because I'm approaching um, Reading, which I'll probably have read at the end of the platform as it tends to do. Um, now, there's also been a quite a big update on this. They've made the safe systems more realistic as well which has meant there is, there you go, there's me AWS there for the um, speed to remind me to drop to 95. Well, I'm, I'm coasting down to, 90, to uh, 95 now. It's just over half a mile away, so I will have to think about braking in a minute. And I've got reduced aspects. That's me, 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 uh, me, um, me double yellow. So my next single will be, dip, will be single yellow, no doubt. So let's start braking. So I've chose three just to kind of get some air into the pipes, get it through the tip. We've got to remember as well, when you put brakes on a big train, the brakes have got to go through the train. So we're just dropping down now. I'm going to continue braking because even though the, the speed is 95, we now have a 60 mile an hour. And it just goes, not, it goes 95, 60, 30. So in reality, there's no point trying to just settle for 95, then for double yellow again. You might as well just keep, um, you might as well just keep dropping down. So, um, now, there is a bit of a, there's been a bit, an update to this recently. I've noticed that I've, I've, with the safety systems on, there appears to be a bit of a TPWS trap on Reading Station. So, every time, if you're with the 66 or the HST, it doesn't seem to happen with the 166. When you approach um, the platform, uh, it, even though the speed is 30 mile an hour, the actual speed, you are approaching a red signal. So I'm not sure what the speed is set at, but I've tried a variation of speeds um, as slow as, as, as almost as, as, as necessary, and I've still been caught out. So I'm going to try and creep into the station. So I'm doing 34, 33. We're just dropping to that 30 mile. Now. As you can see, 200 odd yards away now. I'm doing 27, so I'm doing well below the speed limit now. So as we approach Reading Station, there will be a red in the platform at the end of the platform. So if there's a red at the end of the platform, there is a right old TPWS trap. Now I'm I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, I've tried it many different ways and I appear to be, I mean, look, I'm doing 21, I mean, it's ridiculous, you can do a lot quicker than this in real life. In real life, you can be doing 30 in an HST, approaching a red signal to red in, you'll still start, but this doesn't seem to, so I'm doing 17 mile an hour, so I'm creeping now, really I'm creeping to, uh, into the station, 16 mile an hour, so I'm, I'm, I mean, obviously I've got to watch, I've got my red signal coming up, so I'm going to make sure I've got to cancel my address. This is where the complications start. So the controller's been not been used for a bit, so I'll make sure we do it. DSD doesn't come off. I've got to make sure that I can to the AWS for the red, and then I've got to start braking to stop at the red signal. I'm doing 16 mile an hour. So just watch my brake. There you go. Look, so my brakes have just dumped in. The TPWS has kicked in at 16 mile an hour. My AWS will go off now, so I better get that cancelled. Um, so what happens then? You see, things have stopped. So what you have to do now is you have to reset the desk. So drop your brake off. If you just look to the left hand side on the desk, well, well, first of all, shut your desk down. So, if you turn your key off, turn your reverser off, turn your key off, okay? The TPWS, the three lights on the left hand side next to the windscreen washer um, is where you uh, turn off, a, you can't see it's lit because of the sun, that's why I couldn't spot it. So if you press that, that should drop your light out. And then set your desk back up again. So put your key back on. And then put your reverser back in. You should, in a, in a moment or two, get brake release. So just wait, it's starting to come back. So the brakes have dropped off again now. So you should be able to start moving the train again. So let's put a bit of throttle on we should start moving see I could just open the doors and finish the service but I'm, 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 a, I'm a sucker for like going no I'll have to try and take off the end of the platform you wouldn't do it in real life would you so I'm trying to treat this as a real life situation if I did have my brakes dumping in real life 
so we're moving now so that's basically what happens and that can happen that can happen anywhere it's happened with me on the 66 as well in on the main line where i've gone a little bit too quick approaching a sig uh, course your aspect so what you what you should do is cancel the tbws override shut down your desk reopen the desk again and then get going and you'll be fine there is a, there's supposed to be a sort of like a six i think it's a 60 second lock get lockout but i found that it doesn't really work properly on this simulator you have to shut your desk down and start again it won't just re reset and off you go i don't know where the sound rule off i uh, i'm not sure it may it possibly may be right so just approaching this at uh, the end of the platform i'm gonna try and stop as best i can at the stop board and and also not spad the signal so that's sig signal passing at danger um so i'll just take it steady uh we're still early i mean it's 9 39 the train's still early so but the worst thing about it is right let's get the brake on to stop put it on initial that should lovely stop there so there you go beautiful little stop so we'll get the doors open um so that so uh, we can get the service indicator done so let's uh have a quick look outside and see how, how good the stop was i mean i know it's it's hard i find it harder to stop when you're already going slow um, i'd rather stop at speed because at least i can't I, can, I feel like i can kind of gauge it better because i'm used to it so yeah that's a relative, i mean normally the, the the idea is to try and have the the hst board in the window of the cab but the issue is you're right on the nose of the signal then so you can't see it so there's a bit of a debate about what's best but anyway that's what we've got that's what we're doing so uh, so yeah, so there we are. We've completed the service with that little issue there, and we're still on time. However, as you'll notice in a minute, when you do finish the service, if you arrive early anywhere, you still get a red cross because you're early. So bar short of standing outside the state, bar, bar short of I don't know, not going as fast, or well, even I was doing line speed virtually all the way, um, give or take one two seven here, one two three there. I was pretty much doing the average of 125 mile an hour for the for most part. Anyway, right, let's lock them doors. So, oh, yeah, and, and obviously, if you don't know already, you use your left D-pad and choose the options. So there you go. Look at that. A red cross because I arrived early. That's basically what it's all about. So, yeah, and that's what happens when you arrive early at station, you get a red cross because that's what's been happening to me. So, yeah, well, I hope you found this useful and I hope you've uh, learned a couple of things from that and I'll see you again soon. Take care.